Hey y'all, welcome back to the Craft Castle. I am so excited about this little project that I'm gonna be working on. It is for my son's fourth grade teacher. And I'm just gonna make like a basic tote bag for her, but I'm gonna use some sublimation markers for it and a linen bag, and I'm gonna make a tote bag, or a, I'm sorry, a notebook out of this plain white tote. Um, once I get done doing that, hopefully these markers will be perfect for my idea that I have. And then after I sublimate on there, I'm just going to HTV a saying or her name or something like that on here. But first, I want to try and experiment with these markers right here and get a plain white tote looking like a notebook paper. So I can't imagine that this is going to take forever. It just this portion of making this tote into a notebook. So I already have my heat press set up. The cool thing about Craft Express, all their blanks, they come with your settings already on there. So it's at 374. We're gonna press it for 80 seconds. So I'm gonna move all these over. Now I have extra scrap paper because I wanna be able to make straight lines. So I'm just going to kind of line this up like this and make sure that it's really straight. Tape, just so I can tape my paper together so it doesn't wiggle on me. If you had a really long ruler too, I'm sure you could do it that way as well. Okay, so just with like a normal piece of paper, see look, it's still too short right here. So with the tape, just gonna pull it off and scooch it down just a little bit. There we go. All right, I'm gonna line this up, make it look like it is straight. Let's see, we've got a ruler here. Let's go two inches, two inches. Okay, so the line that goes down on a piece of notebook paper is red. So we're just gonna use red for that. Right? Red? Let's yes okay i had to double check to make sure so i have done a sublimation print using these markers directly on the fabric and while i would not suggest doing this for most of the time because it does make your stuff kind of fuzzy or blurry i think it's okay because i kind of want it to be like a rustic looking uh, notebook paper so i'm just going to just draw right on top of my sublimation blank Draw the line and it is okay if you mark on your spare paper because we can just throw that way here in a second okay get that thing to stop beeping alrighty so we got our red line and then I'm gonna do a blue start doing some blue lines I'm just gonna mark the first one first all the way over And then I'm gonna take my ruler. This is just a fabric ruler. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna make sure and drop it down two inches. And then this side as well, I'm just gonna make sure that it's lined up two inches because you don't want your lines to be not straight. You'll be able to tell for sure. Okay, uh-oh. Come on. There we go. And drop it down another two inches. There we go. Oh, it's turning out so cute already. We'll just do another two inches. All right, and do we have enough room to do one more line? Oh, we do just barely. I'm gonna do one more line just because it will probably drive me crazy if I don't add that extra line in there. There we go. Okay, that <laughs> that small little area right there, if I wouldn't have drawn that line and this would have been really big, it would have driven me nuts. Okay, I'm just going to fill in a couple of these lines because they seem to be pretty light. Alrighty. Okay, so because I just used these markers directly onto the tote, I don't need any type of heat transfer tape because there's nothing to glue on there or to tape on there. I am just going to use some butcher paper, get my scissors, and I'm going to trim out 
the size of the notebook and I'm going to, or the tote, and I'm going to put this on the inside of the tote bag. And I'm going to do this another time and make sure the entire thing is filled up because the back side, I don't want the back side to have any type of fading or ghosting that goes on the inside. So I'm going to try and avoid that if I can by just filling up the entire tote with this paper. It's like a barrier is what I would call it. Let's just have a little hanging off. this like that okay now taking my pressing mat because we're going to have to work in sections with this because my pressing mat and this is smaller than my and by this tote bag then also what you want to do is take just more butcher paper and we're creating that sandwich. The sandwich that we always create when we do sublimation, we're creating that sandwich. Generally, I would fold over the paper and make that sandwich myself, but instead for this one, because I put it on the inside, you just need it on the top. I'm just going to take my heat press and again, working in sections. Ooh, look at how vibrant just this little area right here you can see that it's pressed in there so we're going to move this over you be quiet okay on this scrap piece of paper you see that there's red right here you don't want to repress that onto your on onto your blank and actually it's very light but there's blue also on the paper i don't think that you'd be able to pick it up on the camera but trust me it is so you just want to make sure that you use a brand new piece of paper because if you reuse it elsewhere that's going to be seen elsewhere so we're just going to put this back down there move this over to this side and press again okay lifting this off you can totally tell when something has been pressed and we still have a little bit more to go. So looking at this one, this one actually doesn't have a lot of transfer on there. So I'm just going to reuse this, put it down, repress. Okay, that red line's there, so we're going to make sure not use that. I'm going to cut that off. The blue is actually not bleeding as much onto the paper, so that's good. And we just have this small little corner to do. Take that off. All right, this look turned out so stinking cute. We're gonna turn around the back and see if it bled through on the back. Oh. My pressing mat had a little bit left over from before, and so it picked up a little bit back there. Not too worried about it. It's hard to tell. I probably, no one will probably notice it besides me because I know it's back there. But the front of it looks really good. Now, with normal sublimation prints, if you were to print the sublimation and press it, it would not be fuzzy, and I'll show you what I mean by that. But this right here, it actually isn't that bad. But you can see like, right here in the red it probably is going to be really hard to see but there's like little red speckles that is because i use these artistry markers they're sublimation markers and i use them right on top of your sublimation blank um and so in like the lines don't seem as crisp the only reason why it did that is because i used these markers right on top of the blank now if i were to use these markers drew on a piece of paper and pressed it on there you would not have the fuzziness of that but like i said previously i have pressed a shirt before just drawing right on it onto the blank and it really wasn't even i i personally did not even think it was that bad so that's why i chose to do it this method just because we're skipping a method or skipping a step which is great for me it's a quick and easy craft okay now that i know that this is perfectly done and it looks good. I'm going to go ahead and cut my son's teacher's name. Now I am going to put it in between these two letters. So for me, it's going to be 
like I'm gonna go an inch and a half big on all the lettering. So I'm gonna go and do that on my Cricut and then I will be back for with the HTV to press it on there. Okay, so I cut out my HTV. Um, <laughs> my settings on my Cricut were way too th uh, heavy. So I have cut through my carrier sheet, which is bananas. But I'm using Polytate's HTV, which is like really easy to weed. Love this stuff. Um, Obviously, if you had the correct setting, you would not be doing what I'm doing and trying to make sure that the carrier sheet's not coming up because that is exactly what's happening. I forgot, I f remember Demir, forgot to change my settings on my Cricut. Whoopsies. Okay, so we got this. I did kind of put something else in between to save on HTV, so I'm just gonna cut that out. That's gonna be the third line. We're gonna just put this on. Oh, and I didn't do the spacing correct, so I'm just going to cut that. We'll bring that up. Oh, that's so cute. How darling, how darling is that? And then we got teacher things. Make sure it's all level. Put that there. And then I have just some itty bitty scissors. I did have a ruler, but that seemed to just cut terribly for how small I wanted it. So we only get some scissors. Okay, when it comes to, I'm gonna put this here and I'm actually gonna drag this down just a little bit. Maybe we'll keep off teacher things. Like that? I think that's cute. Yep, I think that's cute. Okay, so we have already sublimated on top of this. I am going to layer on top of this as well. So we just want to do one real quick, quick press. Just put it on there and get off of it real quick. So just like a second or two, bring it up. It's okay that that didn't stay down all the way because I'm getting ready to press it longer. This one seems to need, see how that period is coming up just a little bit? I think we're gonna leave that one on there. That one can stay. And with this, layer that on top. And the reason why we did a really quick and quick press is because when you press HTV, it shrinks up just a little bit. And so when you do a really quick press, you eliminate it shrinking a whole lot, which that's what we are trying to do because we're layering on top. Also, the cool thing about Polytape HTV is it doesn't shrink as much as other brands do. And we're just gonna press this for a little while longer because now we're doing like a better press than the first time and we have no other layers to go on top. So we're good on pressing it a little bit longer. And then we'll peel, whoop. See how my carrier sheet is coming up or not coming with it staying on the HTV? Yeah. This is why you wanna have correct pressing settings <laughs> or Cricut settings. So your carrier sheet is not all messed up like mine. Okay, now that we've got that done, do one final press for a little bit longer. And this is just so you're pushing all that stuff when you're pulling it, when you're pulling the carrier sheet off the HTV, you're pulling out that glue. And so what we're doing now is we're repressing it back into the blank to where it's really stuck in there. And then that's it, you have a finished tote. Here is the back. We just have that little area. You would not have this if your pressing mat was not messed up, which I mean, it is really hard to tell. Ooh, you can see it right here in different lighting. 
And then here is the other side and that is it. We have a finished product. Now you could probably do this in sublimation as well, but because I, the problem with sublimation is you have to write up or backwards if you were doing those markers and I did not want to have to figure out how to write backwards. So that's why I did it like this. But otherwise that this looked turned out so cute. And what, how long did this take? Five minutes. It was such a quick and easy craft and great for back to school. All right, y'all, I hope I inspired you to make and I will see you later.